Hello and welcome to a DFS strategy video for the 2022 FedEx St. Jude Championship. My name is Eric, and here at Sweet Spot DFS, you should already know, it's all about trying to thought from the lineup every single week. I put out a preview video earlier today where we targeted the stats you wanted to build your lineups around. Now in the strategy video, it's all about taking what we learned in the preview and also applying the Sweet Spot ranks, the marquee tee times, as well as the anchor buckets from this video to really narrow down on a player pool and really try to find two golfers to anchor our lineups around. At least that's my goal every single week. Trying to find the best two golfers to anchor my lineups around because then I use the bucket system to find the other four golfers for all the lineups that I create. It limits the amount of combinations of lineups I can create, which will ultimately give me the best opportunity, the best chance of hitting the optimal lineup. So that's my whole goal in this video. It's basically how I do DFS golf. And I might as well just share what I've learned because I've been pretty successful this week or this, this year, I should say. So that is what we're gonna do in this video. But before we get into any of that, just a reminder, some giveaways. First one being a subscriber giveaway. I'm gonna give $40 away to someone. I said in the preview to anyone, that's not true, to someone. So I'm only doing it, a one, it's a one-time thing. I'm giving $40 away as long as we reach our goal of getting to 450 subscribers by the end of this week. If you want an entry into this giveaway, all you gotta do is comment on this video. Give me your, if you need a topic, give me your two favorite golfers you're going to anchor your lineups around this week. You can leave any comment and that gets you an entry. By the way, you also need to be subscribed to the channel. I think that goes without saying, but sometimes people get that mixed up. So be subscribed, comment down below. That's one entry into this giveaway. You can gain another one by going to the preview video I put out earlier today. Go comment on that one. You'll get, you'll get another entry that way. I also do a prize picks video Wednesdays, so go and check that video out, comment on that one, and now you have three entries into this $40 giveaway. If we don't reach the, the goal of 450 subscribers by the end of the week, I'm going to rerun this giveaway. So I won't run this giveaway this week, but I'll rerun it next week until we hit that goal. By the way, that $40 will then be shaved by $10 down to $30. So we'll run the giveaway for 30 next week only if we don't hit our goal this week. We just need six new subscribers. So I'm hoping that's clear. Also guys, half of the people that watch this video are not subscribed to the channel. So we can get six new subscribers pretty easy. If you want a chance to win $40, be subscribed. Comment down below. We only have two weeks worth of uh, entries. So your chances of winning are pretty high if you enter this week. So highly suggest you guys to go do that. And if you want an additional one, go retweet any of my videos that I post on Twitter. Go retweet them. That gets you an additional free entry. So you can get up to four this week, which will really, really increase your odds of winning this giveaway. That's enough of that. Second giveaway is more of a rebate. If you want to play prize picks for free, I'm giving you the opportunity to do just that. Sign up on prize picks using the promo code sweet spot, put a $20 initial deposit into your account, and I will refund that $20 to you. Prize picks will match your deposit. So that 20 turns into 40. And really it's just going to cost you that initial deposit plus your signup information. That way you can play this for free, but prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. So you could put hundred dollars in there. I'm still going to give you $20 back. Plus they're going to match you. So you have $200 in your account, and when all the dust settles, it'll only cost you $80. So it's up to you guys. There's a link in the description that'll send you straight to the prize picks, and it will already populate that sweet spot promo code in there. So you don't even have to do that. Highly, highly encourage you guys. Go sign up using the promo code sweet spot. You'll get $20 over the deal. It's the best, it's really the best deal in this industry. I've never seen anyone else give away money. They just go, hey, you're gonna get a deposit match. Well, all of us content creators have that opportunity to, de to match your deposit. So um, I'm going above and beyond. So use the promo code SweetSpot. Uh, that way you can get your $20 that way. Now I am also providing a cheat sheet and I suggest you guys, if you wanna follow along with me throughout this video, everything that's on this cheat sheet is what I'll be going through. So you have the dream sheet is what I call it. That's part of the cheat sheet which has all of the information, including the scoring that I do for the sweet spot scoring, 
uh, all of the season long stats, recent form stats, your golfer information. I mean, if you want to copy this down, it's available to you guys. It's free. There's a link in the description. I just want you guys to know or suggest for you guys to go to the file menu and make a copy. Go down, make a copy because the filters that I already have in place, the only way to access them is if you make a copy because I only give you read access when you go visit that link. So again, make a copy of it. That way you can follow along with me. It also includes the bucket system, which again, I will be going through in this video. Again, make a copy. So that's available to you guys. And then I do have the optimizer up and ready. So this is available to anybody who's interested. Uh, you gotta be subscribed to the channel. Again, I want to reward those that participate with the channel. Um, so be subscribed and then also comment down below and uh, email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com letting me know that you're interested in using the optimizer. The wonderful thing about this optimizer is it uses the bucket system. It, I already have all the buckets preloaded, the minimums, the maximums, all of that stuff loaded in here. Um, you can also um, fiddle around with it however you see fit. If you want some of these um, conditions to be different, you can change that. You can also change the metric that the optimizer uses. So say you like uh, John Rom a little bit more. I've already kind of messed around with this. You can change his score to like 14, like to whatever value you want to make sure the optimizer goes, hey, this is the player you want. Or you could just lock him in. I have a whole video on how to use this optimizer in the description below. So if you're interested to see all of the benefits of using this, highly encourage you guys to go watch that video. Um, but this is available to you guys. Uh, again, you got to be subscribed to the channel, comment down below, and then email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com just saying you're interested in this optimizer. Those are all the giveaways. Let's go ahead and review. That's right, we're going to review the Wyndham Championship and the, the, the purpose of this. So I reviewed a little bit of it during the preview video. Now we're reviewing it again, but the whole purpose in this video to review it once more is to go over the sweet spot process, which includes the rankings, which also includes the marquee tee times, which is primarily what I'll talk about in this video. It's just to prove to you guys that this process works. So when it comes to, I mean, I'm, I'm not really gonna talk about the rankings. The rankings kind of go, they're involved with the, the optimizer and who the golfer or what the optimizer chooses. Basically what I wanna see inside the top 10 is because there's 156 golfers in the field for the Wyndham Championship, I wanna see at least 90%, maybe 80% of the golfers inside the top 10 having a score less than 100. So like we have Ben Griffin 148 and then Max McGreevy at 137. Outside of that, I think our max score is 75, which is pretty darn good. Our 25th ranked golfer in the sweet spot model, Tom Kim, won the tournament. Sung JM was number two in the model. He finished a second. Um... John Huh was okay at 73rd, like he was 73rd in the model. Russell Henley was 6th in the model. Taylor Moore, uh, I chose just to ignore him, although he was a low 7k golfer and inside my top 50 rankings, that's pretty good. I just chose to ignore him, which was, you know, all, all my fault. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton was 15th. It's Tyrrell, not Terrell. Some of these guys in the industry can't say his name correctly. Um... And then a bunch of guys in the 6K range that were actually top 70, except for Anner Ben Lahiri. I really liked Lahiri last week, but I got caught up on his Bermuda splits. They weren't all that great. Um, like his average overall, his overall average finishing position, 54, not very, uh, I, I actually went over Chesson. Anner Ben's worse. Uh, his first top 10 was this week. So 0%. Very bad last year, Bermuda. Very bad overall. Um, that, to me, got me off of Lahiri, but I like his game. I just didn't think he was good on Bermuda. Anyways, um, I don't want to go over the rankings too much. I just wanted to show you, you know, they, they did all right. Now, going into the marquee tee times. Now, if you are unaware... Um, what, oh, I, I have this filtered out for some... Okay. 
if you're unaware of the marquee tea times, basically I take the rankings of these golfers in each of their tea times Thursday, Friday, and I group rank them. So whatever the lowest score is will be number one. And that was your Sung J Will Zalatoris JT Poston group. That makes perfect sense. They had a cumulative ranking. That's what I based this off of, of 31. And then the Tom Kim, Corey Connors, Sebastian Munoz group had a cumulative ranking of 52. And it goes on and on and on. Obviously, the higher the cumulative ranking is, the higher their group rank is. Doesn't matter to you guys. Basically, I look at the top six groups, sometimes the top seven groups of the marquee tee times. And the whole premise behind this is you want to find somewhere between two to four golfers to build your lineups around in these marquee tee times because more off uh, it's two to four because every single week I see at least two up to a max of four golfers from the marquee tee times in the optimal lineup. There have been weeks where I've seen only one. I don't think there's ever been a week where there were zero, but from, for the most part, it's two to four. So that's why I always encourage you when we go through your strategy videos to find two golfers from here. Guess what? We had three. And remember what the other rule is? Never pick, pick one golfer or never pick two golfers from the same group. That still applies here. So the Sung J Wills Out Taurus, JT Poston group. Sung Jay was your optimal lineup guy from that group. Tom Kim, Corey Connors, Sebastian Munoz. Tom Kim was your optimal. And then if you were, if you recalled, I, I actually highlighted the wrong groups here, but Russell Henley, Alex Molly were with, uh, shoot, Robert Garrigus, I think. I think Robert Garrigus would have brought this group down from a marquee tee time, but I didn't have him loaded in here. So I kind of like... Russell Henley and Alex Smalley had a really good score themselves. So I included them in the marquee tee times. Maybe they would have just been a little outside of it, uh, which is whatever. I can't remember who was in their group before, but I think it would have been close. Anyways, I had said on the Fantasy Golf Pod, if you're un unfamiliar with those guys, uh, Chad Eckert, Josh Bennett, Eric Martins, I usually join their group a lot. We were, we were talking Wednesday night last week, and they're like, who are you, who are you building your laps around? And I go, well, either Russell Henley or Alex Smalley is going to finish inside the top 10. And I, think, I, I even think I said top five. One of those guys was going to finish inside the top five. Russell Henley ended up doing it. Now, why? Why? Why does this make any sense? Like, why did I feel like Russell Henley or Alex Smalley were going to do that? Well, first of all, I think they were in the anchor buckets. One of them or both of them were in the anchor buckets. They showed up a bunch. Plus, just building lineups around. I went heavy on Sungjae. So I wasn't going to choose Will Zalatoris and JT Poston. That's the other beauty, like brilliant part about the bucket system and the sweet spot process. You only can pick one of these guys. So it automatically forces you off the other two guys. Good choice on my part. We went with Sung JM. Um, I didn't choose any of these guys. I really like Sebastian Munoz, who ended up missing the cut. Now, I didn't anchor around Sebastian Munoz. I think I had his um, uh, his exposure set to like 16%. I didn't want to have more than 16% of them. I think I used all 16%. So I had them in a bunch of lineups. But I um, went around Sungjae and Adam Scott. Now, it allowed me, um, it allowed me to get to a bunch of Alex Smalley, but it kind of got me away from Russell Henley. And in that Fantasy Golf Pod uh, Wednesday night podcast, I was telling them I really wanted to build lineups around Sung Jae and Russell Henley. Now, the issue that I came across when building lineups was it was very narrow. Like, I couldn't, there weren't a lot of options I could build going Sung Jae, Russell Henley, but in a way that's actually very good. When you can't build a line of lineups, with anchoring around two guys, that actually helps you get to the optimal lineup that much easier. But me, I'm stubborn. I'm just like, I don't like, because what it would have forced me to do is it would have forced me to like play Sebastian Munoz at 50% because I probably would have went Sebastian Munoz over Tom Kim. Um, and it would have made me go like 50% on, on that because I have to open up my exposures 
to those other golfers that are showing up more and that only work with Russell and Sungjae. So although I preach my process, I'm still fine tuning it to make it easier and more comfortable for me to select golfers um, using it. But either way, Russell Henley, Alex Molly, I should have just stayed to my, my take. I should have went very heavy on them. Maybe I should have anchored around them. Maybe if I went this way, it gets me to Tom Kim. I don't have the optimizer uh, that had all this information in there, so I can't build any of those lineups to show you guys if we could get there, but I'm pretty sure we can. Um, so anyways, it's this worked. The sweet spot process worked. The marquee tee times worked. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the FedEx uh, St. Jude Championship and go over the rankings. Now, for you guys at home, all the rankings really mean or really matter to you is it, that this is how it gets thrown into the optimizer and how the optimizer selects golfers. Um, let's go ahead and actually, let me sort by salary. So the very first thing that I like to tell you guys is pay attention to the last guy you see on the screen. Billy Horschel, 82. 8,200. And it's not so much look at the last guy. Look at the last salary tag. Anyone cheaper than $8,200 that pops up in uh, within here, once I sort this by sweet spot rank, they are um, a value play, in my opinion. So let's go ahead. Let's sort it by ranking. Uh, anyone cheaper than 8200 we have Russell Henley. No-brainer. Very good value. And he's like the only guy. Ever, this is why... I, I was I've been talking about this with DraftKings. DraftKings and my rankings are have or I should say have been very very close to each other, um, which is awesome because it it kind of helps with kind of like recording. Actually, I don't know how to how to say it. It I I, I like it because the salaries and my rankings will be really easy to work with buckets. Because I obviously have salary buckets. Um, and if the rankings follow that, then I should be picking the right players more often than not when I find the anchors I want to build around. So anyways, he's really the only one worth value. Now, Colin Morikawa slips way down here at $8,700. I shouldn't say way down here, um, but he does drop a little bit. Um, Sung Jae go moves up. As does Sam Burns. Sam Burns and Sung Jae this week for me, popular plays. I really like them this week. Patrick Cantley, 10 3. He's what, the fourth priced guy in this field, and he's the second ranked guy in my, um, my rankings. He's kind of a dangerous guy to build lineups around. The optimizer likes him. I'll, I'll say that already. Now, just so you guys are aware, here are, here's what goes into the scoring. OWGR, I understand they changed. And by the way, uh, someone mentioned this. He, This person emailed me and said, how do you get the strength of field rating? Well, I figured out the calculation that the OWGR did, or I was really close to it. I, I'm always within like seven points. I think there's some kind of home field advantage, like bonus that the OWGR provides some of these points or some of these golfers. But I figured out how to figure uh, to, to do the strength of field writing. Now the OWGR changed. And so now there's a new rating scale based off of the difficulty of the field and yada, yada, yada. I really don't care. Uh, I haven't really looked into I shouldn't say I don't care. I really haven't looked into it. But that's how I still have the strength of field writing. Uh, and the OWGR, obviously, I recorded this before they made the updates, like the OWGR scores. So if it's confusing to some people how I still have them or whatever, it's because I got it before they made the updates. So we have OWGR, we have Bermuda grass, you know, see, um, career average, basically. My stats go back to 2013. So that's as far back as this Bermuda average goes back. Top 10 success rate on Bermuda, a full year's worth of Bermuda stats. So dating back one full year from today's date, um, we have those in there. Basically, your best golfer is 50 points. It, it, it would be 100 points, but I water this down by half. So that's why 50 is the highest. 
Grass 2, you can just ignore that. Everyone has the same amount of points. I do not have a second grass at this golf course. Tournament history is really course history. Um, then we have our season long stats of bogey avoidance, pretty better. Driving distance, obviously, to me, these are all of your potential stats, uh, which I should say, to me, it's like ranking someone's p potential. And then I have recent form DraftKings points average, finishing average, finishing position average, I should say, and then round by round scoring average. Again, that is weighted down by 50%. And then season long DK average, scoring average, round under 70%, cut made percentage, and DK top 10%. And then an out, just to clarify who's out, I want to penalize them. Uh, you can't see them because I have them hidden under this, this um, um, filter. But it would say minus 1000, and it's just an easy way for me to make updates because I usually do it all from another page, and then I just copy and paste it here. Well, when I start removing people that are out from this page and not from my engine page, we'll call it, um, I have to be really careful where I cut and paste. Where now, I don't have to be if I just include everybody. So that's the, uh, the reason for that. Anyways, that creates the score, which obviously then goes into our marquee tee time. So I'm going to go ahead and sort by this group rank. Again, if you're following along with me, um, like I told you before, make a copy of that cheat sheet, go to your filter, go down to the DraftKings filter. I'm sorry, I didn't say this earlier. That's how you can follow along with me. So these are currently the marquee tee times. This is subject to change based off of anyone withdrawing or anything like that. Um, these other golfers that I'm highlighting here are more of an honorable mention. I wouldn't say, you know, Consider these guys the same as the guys up here with the marquee tee times. There are six groups. I still think you want to choose somewhere between two to four golfers from one of these top six groups to anchor around your lineups. Now, I already have a personal favorite, so I'll go ahead and share that. To me, what I like to do and what I would suggest for you guys to do, because I think it's the easiest way to do this. Um, first of all, go through each of these groups and determine which which groups would you play more than one golfer from? And if you can pick more than one golfer from a group, I say skip that group. Don't anchor around any golfers from that group. So for instance, if you like Rory, you like Cantlay, and you like Xander, and you're not sure who to anchor around, maybe you just skip that group. Now, they're all 10K and above, so you, you, know, you, you probably do want to anchor around one of these guys. First of all, they are the number one group. Secondly, they're all really good golfers. They're going to push each other. They're going to draft off each other. All the things that go with playing in a group of, of, of golfers that are good. Um, perhaps the best to anchor around. However, if you're not sure about them and you're just like, ah, I, I don't know which one to pick, skip past them. Let's go to another one. Cameron Smith, Scotty Scheffler, Sam Burns. Um... When it comes to 10K golfers, like, Scotty Scheffler is a good one to obviously anchor around. I'm not really feeling it this week. I'm also not feeling Cam Smith. Now, if you aren't aware, the whole live thing um, caught up with Cam. Apparently, there are reports he's going to sign. He did just have a press conference uh, earlier today where he wouldn't answer if he did sign with Liv. And he didn't answer whether or not he would play uh, in the September 2nd Boston tournament. So I think there's going to be a lot of pressure behind him. Uh, and this is just all hearsay, whatever. You know, personally, I just think there's too much negativity going around for him to succeed, to him, for, him, for him to excel. And I don't think it's like good negativity. Like, you know, if, if I was playing a competitive round of golf and someone said, you suck, you're never going to win this tournament. That kind of neg negativity for me is good negativity because now I get to go out there with a chip on my shoulder. If you were questioning my morality or questioning if I was a good person or if I had a good heart or, or maybe you just said I'm you know, like an asshole or whatever, that's not good energy. 
you know you go out there maybe you don't really care about a lot of these guys what they say about you or whatever but when you hear the humming around you that everyone's saying it that's not good energy that's not like something that drives you it doesn't motivate you it's just like geez what the hell's wrong with everybody you know so that's kind of how i feel about that now that's a you know that's very subjective that's very subjective that's not an objective take. That's not me saying that's how all golfers or how all people play. But it's just my own personal feelings towards it. And that's why I'm not going to be on Cameron Smith. I, I like I do want to persuade you guys not to play Cameron Smith because I think it's not going to help you guys. Um, but if you don't think that's a big deal, don't let me persuade you. OK, just just throwing that out there. I want to be as transparent as possible here. All of this that I'm saying gets me on Sam Burns. My, bo my boy shot like Harden, the top commenter this week. He he's always on Sam Burns. I like Sam Burns this week. We do want to grab a golfer who did not play last week. Sam Burns is definitely one of them. I like Sam Burns. So for me, Sam Burns is going to be that guy that I'm going to anchor my lineups around. So... $8,600, I normally don't, but I'll tell you one thing. I like JT, I like Tony, and I like Cameron Young. That's a hard group to anchor around. And guess what? There's two 9, 9K golfers that if I do anchor around Sam Burns and say another 10K, now I start with my 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6. Or at least I start with the 10, 9, 8 portion of that 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, 6 that I always tell you guys to start building your laps around. It just works out really, really well. So I, I also skip this group. JT, Fino, Cameron Young. Skip that group. I also am skipping Zalatoris, Sungjae, Hideki. Because these guys can also be paired up with Sam Burns. And I like them all. So I'm also going to stay away from that group. By the way, the next group is the same thing. I like all of these guys. They all can pair up with Sam Burns and another 10K. So now I have one group left. Any of you guys figure out who I'm anchoring around? He's also part of my thumbnail. Both of them are part of my thumbnail. <laughs> it's going to be John Rahm. Um, I, I just think, you know, with Rahm at t a flat $10,000, it just opens up so much, so many lineups. Like I have built so many high quality lineups just starting with John Rahm and Sam Burns. John Rahm, Sam Burns, opens me up to playing Finau, Young, Zalatoris, going double 8Ks with Sungjae or Hideki Matsuyama, or going with a high 9K. Like, going Rahm, Fitzpatrick, and Burns still gives me access to good 7K golfers and then a 6K. I don't have to drop down to two 6Ks, but I could, and I could actually grab another 8K. So, like, Starting out with Rom and Burns, really good. Um, but and and the reason why I like going with Rom is because I don't care for Billy Horschel and I really don't care for Tom Hoagie. Um, this week, John Rom is more of a volatile 10k golfer. If you were to ask me which 10k golfer I would rather play, it'd be Rory McIlroy. Uh, and if I went to like his cut made percentage, let's see here, right here, this, this, uh, column here, actually he's tied with John Rom. Why? Hold on here. Cut made percentage. Okay. I wonder, is it DK points? Oh, I think it's DK points. So John Rom is at 90 points. And then the other guys up here are a little bit higher than him. So Rom doesn't have the most like DraftKings points, but now that I re -look, like I look at this again, oh, Rom's under seventy percent. I think that's probably another one that I was looking at. John Rom with seventy six point one as a point total. Your guys up here are much higher, so it might be worth it to start here. And that's why I was saying like when we first got into these marquee tee times, maybe you do want to start here. They're all high quality guys. Again. I have no issue going, you know, one of these guys and then Sam Burns. 
because even going one of these guys will still give you access to most of the golfers we I just covered, like Cameron Young, Will Zalatoris, Sung J M. Fitzpatrick might be a little difficult to add with Rory at eleven thousand, and then also Sam Burns at eighty six hundred. It might make lineup building a little tough. So that's why I really like John Rahm and why I like Sam Burns this week. Now, here's the here's the thing that I think we go into next. We go into the, the anchor buckets with those names in mind. Try to figure out which are the best ones to anchor around or look at those anchor buckets and then see other quality plays that we, you know, let's say John Rahm or uh, Sam Burns aren't in those anchor buckets, but we find some good high quality golfers like say sung jays in one of them i think we still can build lineups that way so if you're following along with me once again you know make a copy of the the cheat sheet if you haven't already find the uh filter button go to the bucket system basically what we're going to do we're going to go right to the bucket totals for this year we're just going to filter by condition and go down to less than or equal to 30. Why? Because it makes finding anchor plays that much easier when the bucket total is very small. The next thing to do is go to this max projection bucket and go filter by condition, less than, or I'm sorry, greater than or equal to two. So basically why I do greater than or equal to two is because your minimum projection will always be greater than one, meaning you want to grab at least one golfer from this bucket every single time. We pretty much ignore salary and strokes gain stats. There's there's not enough to me there's not enough data to normalize these stats. So they're still kind of being worked in and and being rounded off and and normalized to make these projections e- or make these projections more accurate. The other 3 though, last year one, course history 2 and recent form one, we're going to go over those. So again, following along, now we're on to the dream sheet. We go by, I already forgot, short-term memory is terrible. Last year ones. So we are looking for Sam Burns, John Rahm, Rory McIlroy, uh, Xander Shoffley, if you remember, he was in Rory's group. Um, I already forgot the other 10K golfer that was up, Patrick Cantlay. So right away, boom, we've got Sam Burns, we've got Rory. Maybe we ink around those two. Now, the whole the whole point of this is to read what is our what are our, uh, our projections. We think there's going to be at least one, and then we always round up in this column. So this two point three two becomes a three. We always round down in the minimum projection, so this would become a one. So the projection is somewhere between one to three. Now, if you were in the preview video and you're with me last year or last week, I've also created kind of a quality bucket over here, like a quality check, just to see if this number is still you know, high enough to get to our, you know, our, our projection that we had here. And it really doesn't go down. So I think the projection of one to three golfers from this bucket is pretty good. Now, again, it's one to three, meaning we just need one. And we have our boy Sam Burns here. But we do have some other high quality golfers there as well. So, you know, we could go up to three. You know, Sam Burns, again, $8,600. Well, guess what? Jordan Spieth is a part of the Marquee Tee Times, and he wasn't in any of the groups we talked about. Like, he's not in John Rahm's group. He's not in Burns' group. And I don't remember who's in his group. But either way, $9,100 is cheap enough to build around. Perhaps we go Rory to make our third golfer. Maybe we go Rory, Sam Burns, Jordan Spieth. When we anchor around those three golfers, that's a possibility. Um, also, I mean, there's again, high quality golfers, Will Zalatoris is in that bucket, Scotty Scheffler, Cam Smith, Billy Horschel, Joaquin Neiman. So it, it's really up to you guys. What do you like? So we found one of our guys. We found Sam Burns. I like that. Horse history two is the another, or is the next anchor bucket. And we might as well just look at the projection somewhere between one to four. Now we can do our quality check to make sure that that stays up there. And it doesn't drops down to 2.76. So just to, actually, I can hide this. We don't need to look at this. So just to give you kind of a little, in, like, just, just to show you what I'm talking about, these columns here, they're basically the same thing, but this is a quality check bucket. This is including my sweet spot ranks um, and according to each of the buckets. So eat not, 
within its own bucket. So course history is its own stat. It has six buckets. It's looking at everyone in, the, in those buckets, in the course history buckets, and determining what is the quality of this bucket. Now, why I haven't made it the max projection, it's kind of just, it's like in beta, basically. I'm just trying to, like, I'm getting a feel for it to see if these projections are better than the ones I already had. But to me, just, just to let you guys know, it's like, it is my quality check bucket. So this actually drops down to 2.76. So I would actually just tell you, because we would round up with this one, select one to three guys from the course history two bucket. So let's go ahead, let's look at that. We'll grab every golfer in this bucket once again. Go to our course history twos. See if we can find some of our guys. Um, we have John Rom. We do not have Sam Burns, but we do have John Rom. Rory's there once again, as is Patrick Canley and Xander Shoffley. So I mean, you could anchor around Rory once again. He's there. Scotty Scheffler was in each of those buckets. So was Hideki Matsuyama and uh, never mind. Matthew Fitzpatrick was not. So you could do it that way. Oh, by the way, Webb Simpson was in each of those buckets as well. Uh, I wouldn't do that with Webb though. But either way, it's possible. Now, this bucket's a little bit larger. We have how many golfers in it? 24. Let's just double check. Was that correct? 25. So I must have grabbed the wrong. Not everyone. Oh, I wonder if... I bet you Nate Lashley's in that group. I bet you Nate. What was Nate Lashley? There he is. Nate Lashley, yep, he was. Of course, history two was at 20 to 4. Okay. That's why the number is off. But it doesn't matter. Uh... I say it doesn't matter because Nate Lashley isn't going to affect these buckets in a positive way. We want one to three. John Rahm is there. Now, the rest of these guys here, uh, let's actually sort by salary. It was sorted by group ranks. Um, these are all high-quality golfers. Like We already talked about Webb, but I like Keith Mitchell this week. I like Matt Kuchar this week. Um, hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not a lot of good golfers. But, I mean, if we were starting with John Rahm and then you wanted to pair Matt Fitzpatrick up with Sam Burns, like we were already talking about, you have two of those guys. So, you know, you already have your projection. You know, you already have the amount of golfers that the projections ask for. You don't have to go more than that. And really, if you just went with John Rahm, that's all that you really need. By the way, by the way, Rom and Rory could finish inside the top 10. That bucket would still be successful because there were two guys finishing inside the top 10. The rest of these guys could do really poorly outside of McElroy and Rom. And you just you wouldn't be able to, to roster Rom and McElroy unless they went one, two. If McElroy finishes seventh and Rom finishes second, you wouldn't want to play Rory. But the buckets would still be successful. The projections would still be successful. So that's the other thing that I've learned throughout the years is we do have five 10K golfers in this bucket. Actually, I mean, we have six 9,800 and above. You probably can't roster two of these guys in your lineups. It is doable, but you probably wouldn't want to. With that being said, maybe you just select one. Maybe you just go with John Rom, and maybe you ignore the rest of these guys. I probably won't, but that's what the optimizer is going to allow me to do is I already have course history twos. Now, I do have the max of four in there, but I could certainly move that down to three and make sure the optimizer doesn't select more than three golfers from this bucket. That way, I don't have to think about it. And I could anchor around John Rom, and then say, okay, optimizer, if you want to put in Webb, go ahead. If you want to put in Keith Mitchell, go ahead, but also follow all the rest of the bucket logic. Why well, I like the optimizer, and again, if you want it, you gotta be subscribed, comment down below, and reach out to me at sweetsmopdfs at gmail.com. Right there. Boom. Okay. So that is the second anchor bucket. The third one is your recent form ones. We want somewhere between one to three. That also checks out with the quality bucket, the quality check. 
So let's go ahead. Recent form ones. Now these are your best recent form golfers. This is going to be that zero to 20 range. Double check. So one to three. Uh, Rory's in it. And we don't see John Rahm and we don't see Sam Burns in this bucket, which stinks. Uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick is in that bucket. So here's the thing. Maybe we go McElroy and Burns because McElroy has been in every single one of these buckets. So actually has Cam Smith, right? Except for the course history two bucket. Recent form one last year one. He's in, the, in all of them. Cantlay has been in the course history two and the recent form one. It's Patrick has been in those those buckets as well. So he's worthwhile. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might be switching my tune to more of a Rory. Could be Rory Burns or maybe it's Rory Fitzpatrick. Maybe I don't want to double up that much. But starting with Rory seems like a pretty solid start. And he is one of the best golfers with Bermuda stats in this field. Which is always a good thing. Uh, remember, we want one to three. So if, if you don't mind the optimizer selecting any of these golfers, you know, just cycling through them, I would suggest just take 100 and divide by the number of golfers you like from this bucket. So 100 divided by 6 is 16.66. Put all of these guys' ownership to like 17% or 20% even, and the bucket or the optimizer will select these guys, um, and it won't break the optimizer. I shouldn't say it will select these guys. It'll just, if it does, it won't break. But yeah, that's really interesting, huh? Rory McIlroy, Patrick Cantlay, and Matt Fitzpatrick have just shown up in all of these buckets. So, we've got some de decisions to make. So those are the anchor buckets. We basically went through all of this. Now we're kind of like into our lineup building. So, with that being said, what happens if we start with Rory? Now, I really like Burns, but... Actually, Rory's been in each of those anchor buckets. And, and we just need one golfer from each of those buckets. If we just put Rory in there, it satisfies the bucket logic for each of those buckets. So just having Rory in your lineup already negates the, the last year one minimum that we have here. Um, the course history two minimum we have here and the recent form one minimum. So it gives the optimizer more freedom to select other golfers. Now, again, freedom isn't one of those things that's actually a good thing when building your lineups. You can be more restrictive, it's better. However, Rory just fits a lot of things we want to do. What if we just go Rory and then Sam Burns? Why not? Let's go ahead and, and see how many decent lineups we can build just going with these two guys. Yeah, see, now that's, that's a sexy lineup. That's a really, really sexy lineup. Rory McIlroy, Sam Burns, Sung JM, Keith Mitchell, Siwoo Kim. Uh, Matt Kuchar. Run it again to see, because it's going to take out the lowest guy. And this is a good one too. Max Homa, Brendan Steele to go with Sung Jay and Matt Kuchar. So yeah, uh, starting with Rory seems pretty solid. Just going to include Matt Kuchar most of the time. I think I upped his points because I just liked him. Uh, yeah, starting this way, just oof. Watch out. Hey, shot like Harden. How do you feel about starting with Rory and Sam Burns? If you've gotten this far so far, or if you've gotten this far, these lineups look pretty juicy. Um, let me just go ahead and X out Matt Kuchar because it's just going to keep showing, showing him. Uh, we can move some of these. Kuchar, let's say no. We'll open these back up. I mean, Kuchar was a part of all of those. So let's see what the optimizer will do. Munoz, Siwoo Kim, Keith Mitchell. That's solid. Norin gets included. Take out Chris Kirk. Ooh, Denny McCarthy. I like Denny McCarthy this week, guys. 
yeah, Burns, Sung Jay, Keith Mitchell, I see. Yeah, those are all really good. All right, how about this? Let's go ahead and I'm actually going to X out Mac Kuchar because I know he's going to be selected a lot. He's a really good 6K golfer this week, guys. Like, don't feel um, intimidated or bad for playing him. I think it's a smart choice. John Rom. Let's see what some of these lineups look like with John Rom. Burns, M. So Sung Jay is showing up with a bunch of these. Now we include Tyrrell Hatton to go with Keith Mitchell and Siwoo Kim, which is pretty sexy. Like I said, like anchoring around Burns gives you access to someone like Sung Jay M. I mean, having Russell Henley in that last lineup was pretty phenomenal. Taylor Pendrith, Keith Mitchell, Siwoo Kim. I like all of these. Cameron Davis is kind of an interesting one. Um... I like this one. Fitzpatrick now gets included with Sam Burns, Aaron Wise, Keith Mitchell, Trey Mullinax. I bet you no one's really creating that lineup. Yeah, a lot of these are really good. Uh, it, just anchoring around Sam Burns gives you a lot of flexibility. It it does a lot of good things. John Rom, Fitzpatrick, Burns seems like a really good choice to go. A lot of these lineups are really looking really good. So I think that's it. I'm not going to build more lineups. I know this is kind of frowned upon, you know, giving people access to lineup building. This is another. So I, I guess <laughs> when it comes down to it, I still am uncertain whether or not I should anchor on Rory McIlroy or John Rahm. But both choices so far have have shown me like a lot of really good lineups. Um but I do believe Sam Burns is a pretty good piece of glue to build lineups around. And then just follows along with the marquee tee times really, really well. You know, like I said, it's it's really difficult. Like, um, when we look at all these marquee tee times, there are so many good tee time pairings that it's hard to choose one golfer for most of these. But for me... Choosing Rom over Horschel and Hoagie, super easy, super easy. Like I don't, I don't care for Horschel. I don't care for Hoagie. Now, if you like those guys, then stay away from Rom. Like that's that's easy. But then, like we get into Fitzpatrick, Spieth, Homa. Like those guys. I like Zalatoris. I like Im. I like Matsuyama. I wouldn't want to ink around any of those guys because it would be too hard to choose one over the other. Cameron Young, Tony Finau, Justin Thomas. Again. Hard to find a golfer to anchor around there. Uh, and same goes with Cantley, Rory, and, and Xander. Now, I actually would advocate to anchor around one of those guys, but which one is it? That's what's hard for me. So I, I think maybe I'm doing the, you know, scapegoat method and just doing the John Rahm one because I really don't care for Billy Horschel or Tom Hoagie. Um, but that's a hard one. And then I don't care for Scotty this week, although... Maybe I should, but I really don't care for Cam Smith. So that's why it was easy for me to go Sam Burns, John Rahm. And it fits a lot of the lineups I'm trying to build. So that's it. That's it for the strategy video. Uh, just a reminder, some giveaways, 40 bucks. Give away $40. You got to be, if you want an entry into this giveaway, you got to be subscribed. You got to be. And we also need to reach the goal that's on the screen right now. 450 subscribers, which is just getting six new subscribers. We're already at 444. We're six away. If you're one of those guys that are not yet subscribed, just subscribe. Not a big deal. You can, you can either hit the bell notification to be alerted whenever I, I do um, post videos or... Whenever, like, if your timeline on YouTube is getting flooded by my videos, which really shouldn't happen because I only put three out a week, just hide. Hide videos from me. And you can still be subscribed. Still show your support that way and help out the people that do want to win this giveaway by being subscribed. Again, we're six away. And if you want an opportunity to win $40, you got to be subscribe you got a comment down below if you need a topic give me your two golfers you're building your lineups around this week easy as that and then um 
that's it. Uh, if you want an additional one, retweet this on on Twitter on t on Twitter on Twitter. Uh, you get up to four four entries this week. Comment on all the videos that I post. Easy as that. Also, prize picks. If you haven't signed up, uh, I'm giving you the opportunity to play this for free. You just got to put an initial deposit of twenty dollars in. Use the promo code SweetSpot when you sign up, and I will give you your twenty dollars back. I will refund you. No one else that is going over price picks is doing that. So it's kind of like a, an exclusive deal here. There's a link in the description below that'll send you straight to the sign up page. Highly, highly encourage you guys to go do that. Of course, we talked about the the um the cheat sheet as well as the optimizer. You gotta reach out to me if you're interested in those. Uh not the cheat sheet. Cheat sheets, there's a link in the description for that. Um, but if you do want the optimizer, you gotta reach out to me. You also gotta be subscribed to the channel. Again, I reward those that participate on this channel. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.